Charlene is my bride today. Oh, that's so sweet. Same here. I mean, it was just, this is just fabulous. It was an amazing experience. Um, you know, something we'll definitely remember forever. There's a lot of guys say, oh, it's easy to remember this way. They won't forget their anniversary. They can always just go 777. And one Henderson couple also took the plunge literally. They splashed into matrimony underwater at the Silverton's Aquarium. 77 couples also said their I do's at the Flamingo, while Texas Station performed a free mass wedding for more than 70 couples. Well, Tony Parker and Eva Longoria also took part in the lucky number nuptials. The NBA star and Desperate Housewives actress exchanged vows today in a Paris cathedral. Eva's co-stars Terry Hatcher, Nicolette Sheridan and Felicity Huffman were there to witness the ceremony. Of course, a 7707 doesn't stop with those looking for a lucky day to get married. Thousands of people are also trying to make the superstitious day a big one for their pocketbooks. News 3's Rob McMillan is live in downtown. And Rob, in Vegas, the number one thing you can see in those slot machines are those three sevens lined up in a row. Right, Luis, and a lot of people say that's more likely today. I don't know if it makes a whole lot of sense, but today people think is the big lucky day. A lot of them are here downtown gambling in the casinos, trying to hit the big jackpot. A lot of folks also down at State Line trying to buy the lucky lottery ticket. Now, we went down there to talk to them and also buy ourselves a couple of lottery tickets as myself and my photographer to try to put this so-called lucky day to the test. 777. <laughs> is today your lucky day? Many would agree that seven is a lucky number. So what better day to line up for, say, a lottery ticket than 7707? 7707 is lucky. 7707, a lucky day? That's what they say. It's what do you think? Uh, I'm not superstitious, but everybody else seems to think so, so why not? Jack and Vatra Hibbs drove all the way down to Prim today simply because they thought 7707 would be a lucky day to buy a winning lottery ticket. A lot of other people were in line here too, most with the same mindset. I don't know what everyone is doing here, we're going to win. It's once a year, why not? It's entertainment, it's a good trip down here, we're going to have dinner, so why not? Besides putting money down on lottery tickets, a lot of people were placing bets too. Some betting on baseball. After all, seven games tonight started at 7 p.m. Eastern. Of course, there are those who think this 7707 thing doesn't make any sense at all. You have to be born lucky. All these numbers are just a gimmick to bring up people here and buy the tickets. I wish them all luck. A lot of people think seven is lucky. Very lucky day. So they come out and they bet it. Do you think it's lucky? I think 13 is lucky. <laughs> So still a lot of disagreement over which numbers are lucky. As for our little test here, the winning lottery tickets, well, picture's worth a thousand words, and uh, this lucky day, it ain't lucky at all, if you ask me. Reporting live, Rob McMillan, News 3. Back all here. right, thanks. Sorry to hear that, Rob. Thank you very much for that report. Pull after tickets, though. Here's a look at tonight's winning numbers. 6, 34, 35, 36. 39 and the mega number is 13. Tonight's jackpot is $24 million. Good luck. Breaking news to tell you about right now. It's a developing story. There is a standoff going on right now at an apartment complex near Flamingo and Cambridge. Police tell us the suspect is holding his girlfriend and some children as well hostage inside one of the units. This all started as a domestic disturbance, we're told. And when police arrived, someone from inside fired a shot. We are closely following the situation and of course we'll bring you the very latest as soon as we have that information. Well, some might say we weren't so lucky today when it came to our weather. Another hot one out there. Robert Santos joins us in the Weather Center. Robert, near record temperatures once again. Yeah, we got there. Almost uh, almost a record of 113. That was the record today, but we got up to 112, so just one degree away, unlike yesterday where we did break a record of 115. All right, so here's the current temperature. Yes, if you're new to town, maybe you just went straight from the airport right to the hotel room and you're watching TV right now. Yeah, it is 100 degrees, 1105. Still very hot. Winds from the west at 12 gusts. Well, that has pretty much died down. The breeze is just after uh, sunset. Current temperatures right now from other uh, water smart weather stations, 96 for Spring Valley, 102 for downtown, 99 degrees for Nellis, still hundreds for Southeast Las Vegas and Henderson. And then when we get back together, 
Well, we're going to talk more about uh, some other business. First of all, that heat warning expired at 9 o'clock tonight. We've got cooler temperatures, but still above normal coming. And then we'll talk about some clouds and thunderstorms possible coming up a little later. For now, I'm going to send you back to Luis. All right. Thanks a lot, Robert. Witnesses are sharing their horror stories after a shooting inside the New York, New York casino. This is Steven Zagreen, a Hungarian immigrant living in Las Vegas. He's charged with the brutal attack that left five people injured. Police say Zagreen entered the casino from the elevated walkway out on Las Vegas Boulevard that connects the New York, New York to the MGM Grand. He then opened fire with a handgun, randomly shooting at people on the casino floor below. Two off-duty reservists and two off-duty FBI agents agents eventually stops the green by tackling him to the ground. Nobody took it seriously like somebody, you know, threw some firecrackers down on the ground and all of a sudden they just started going off and then they realized it was for real and everybody started dropping and running out of the hotel. Police say Zagreen was emotionally distressed when he started shooting at gamblers from an indoor balcony. They say prior to Friday's shooting, Zagreen may have been walking the strip for two days wearing a trench coat, possibly looking for a confrontation with police. A crime tracker three alert tonight as police search for the suspect in a drive by shooting. It happened last night at a budget suites motel at Lake Mead and Rancho. That's near Texas Station. At least one person was hit. There's no word yet on the condition of the victim. Police aren't giving out many details. If you have any information about this crime, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 385-5555. Former strip club owner Michael Gallardi is now in a federal prison in Colorado. He surrendered yesterday to begin serving his 30-month sentence. It's part of the deal he struck with prosecutors in return for his testimony against two former Clark County commissioners in a corruption trial. Gallardi admits to paying former commissioners Mary Kincaid Chauncey and Dario Herrera for votes in favor of his business. More than 2 billion people tuned in to watch the series of live Earth concerts aimed at raising awareness about global climate change. The U.S. rounded out the Worldwide Music Fest with star-studded performances in New Jersey. As Michelle Franzen tells us, the 24-hour Music Fest topped previous global concert records. The global concerts to combat climate change set new online records even before the last concert at Giants Stadium in New Jersey wrapped up. Alicia Keys, Bon Jovi and the police helped close out Live Earth's 24-hour music marathon for the U.S. and in London, Madonna wowed Wembley Stadium. Live Earth organizers said the nine live shows stretching across seven continents received more than nine million streams on MSN's internet site. Former Vice President Al Gore hosted the worldwide event attending concerts in D.C. and New Jersey. He urged the estimated two billion people watching to conserve the Earth's resources. I pledge to take personal action to help solve the climate crisis by reducing my own CO2 pollution and offsetting the rest to become carbon neutral. Many fans who came to see their favorite bands were also inspired by Gore's call to action. I think that Al Gore has the right idea when you know in today's day and age, uh, most people listen to what musicians are saying and they listen to what movie stars are saying, sometimes more than politicians. And um, he knows how influential music can be. Some critics question whether the rising temperatures throughout the world are caused or controlled by humans. But for those who do believe, this one-day global event represented the musical seeds of change. In East Rutherford, New Jersey, Michelle Franzen, NBC News. There were some amazing performances, all for a great cause. Well, coming up, the man who claimed he killed John Benet Ramsey is picked up by police today and thrown in jail. What he's charged with now, plus. At first, I really kind of thought it was kind of funny until they actually got arrested. But this was no joke. Two young girls arrested for kidnapping a little boy. What they demanded in their ransom note and why the boys' parents say they knew these girls were trouble. And if you're superstitious, you would say this is an extra lucky baby. He was born today on 707, but that's not where his connection with the number 7 ends. We'll explain next. Stay with us. Thank you for making us your number one newscast at 11 o'clock. This is News 3 Nightside.
There's a garbage crisis in Naples, Italy. The smelly stuff is piling up all over the place, and it's not because garbage collectors are on strike. The problem is that they have nowhere to take it. The Naples landfill is full, and a new landfill was not planned for. Since May, garbage has been thrown on the side of the streets, and as you can imagine, the smell is really bad. It's so bad that people are burning their trash, and there appears to be no solution in sight. John Mark Carr, the man who once claimed to have been involved in John Benet Ramsey's murder, is in trouble once again. He's charged with two counts of domestic violence in Sandy Springs, Georgia. This all stems from an argument that took place last night involving Carr, his girlfriend, and his father. No injuries were reported, but after his arrest, Carr complained of chest pains and was taken to a hospital. After doctors cleared him, Carr was booked into the Fulton County Jail. A 12-year-old girl and her 10-year-old sister are accused of kidnapping a 1-year-old boy for ransom. Police say the sister snuck into a home in Oklahoma and snatched the child. They left a ransom note written in crayons demanding $200,000. The little boy's father recently banned his kids from playing with the accused girls because he says twice they broke into his home through the side door. This time they took his son don't discipline very eat very much and what they do call discipline I wouldn't um, I mean you can't just have your kids running around roaming free I mean the parents need to have something on their back or they need to at least learn their lesson somehow detectives interviewed him uh, asked him why where did you get the notion to do this or where did you come up with this at and they really couldn't answer uh, that and really at, at first they really kind of thought it was kind of funny until they actually got arrested Little Brandon was found safe in about an hour. The two girls are in juvie, charged with kidnapping, extortion, and first-degree burglary. Well, as we've been telling you, many people are getting married today because they believe seven is a lucky number. But it's more than luck that motivated one couple to say, I do. They picked the day because it's also the bride's birthday, her daughter's birthday, and believe it or not, it's also the groom's birthday. Leanne Gregg has their story. Part fate, part luck. Party and John Allison That's said what... brought them to this day. We are gathered together here at beautiful Caesar's Palace to celebrating the uniting in marriage. It's their dream wedding on their dream date, 7-7-2007. They picked the day for extra luck because it's also the bride's birthday, her daughter's birthday, and believe it or not, the groom's birthday. A once in a century day for the couple's new beginning. Oh, John, you're starting out your first day of marriage in a three-piece suit in 120 degree weather. It's going to get better than this. <laughs> The lavish affair, officiated by comedian Rita Rudner, complete with champagne and cake created by a renowned pastry chef, was also a stroke of luck. Their journey to the altar got off course when they both lost their jobs and couldn't afford a wedding. When Caesar's Palace learned about their circumstances, the resort offered to host the event. We are the luckiest couple in Las Vegas and right now I think the world. They're among thousands of other brides and grooms hoping triple sevens will bring their marriages luck. The line at the Las Vegas Marriage Bureau stretched around the block Friday night before the wedding day blitz. Okay. <laughs> seven, seven, seven. Lucky day, uh, lucky wedding, hopefully to be together forever. <laughs> this couple decided to take the plunge literally inside a giant casino aquarium. A time for celebration on one of the biggest days ever for two simple words, I do. Leanne Gregg, NBC News, Las Vegas. And if the number seven is truly a lucky number, then a baby born in Denver, Colorado today may be one of the luckiest. Robert Purvis was born this morning, 707 at 701 AM. He weighs seven pounds, seven ounces, and was delivered in room number seven. And that's not all. Little Robert is the seventh grandchild on both sides of the family. The baby's dad says he's not normally superstitious, but today he bought seven lotto tickets. And we all want to know if we're going to be in luck for the Santo 7. Oh, yeah. If you like a cool down, it's That's coming. That's what we want to hear. Hey, cool down, you know, people saying, what cool down? Yeah, we're cooling down, but it's not going to be terribly significant. I mean, we're still going to be in the hundreds, so. But 107, right? I think 107. We'll, we'll take we, got it, some, right? we got some 107s <laughs> for you. Hey, real quick, uh, as we uh, go to weather here, I want to tell you about a quick fire. We had a, a viewer, Bob Geske, who emailed me. It's a fire in central Utah. If you're planning to drive through to uh, the I-15, it's closed. If you're planning to drive up to Utah, closed a uh, 100-mile stretch from Scipio to Beaver. 
Uh, that's uh, about 100 miles uh, we're talking about. And Milford Flat area, there's a fire there. It's about the 120 miles south of Salt Lake City. So if you're driving up there, expect some major delays. 100 mile stretch of the 15. All right, let's talk weather right now. High temperature today, 112. The average 104, we're one degree away from the record. Overnight low, 90 degrees. The average 78. We're now down to 100. Winds from the west at 12. Other current temperatures from our water smart uh, weather stations, 95 Spring Valley, 97 for Lakes East, 99 for Nellis, but clear across the valley, all hundreds for high temperatures, and that switched right now, 109 for Lakes East, 114 for downtown, a pair of 111s for Nellis, and southeast Las Vegas. All right, 90 degrees was the overnight low last night for Las Vegas. We're expecting to get down to 85. Same thing for Laughlin, 84 for Boulder City, 75 for Prim. And then tomorrow, we're expecting to get into the hundreds all across 115, slightly cooler, just below uh, warning criteria. Hey, if you watch Live Earth, what a great concert, huh? Lots of great concerts and a great message about global warming. And one of the things they talked about was changing a light bulb. If one million households changed four light bulbs to this, the CFLs, compact fluorescent light bulbs, we would rid the earth of about 900,000 tons of uh, greenhouse gases. So that's definitely something that we can easily do. And another tip I wanted to share is bring your own bags when you go to the grocery store. I bought this, 99 cents at one particular grocery store. I'm not gonna name which one though. They're not paying me for the uh, commercial. But yeah, bring this. And guys, if the flowers are a little too much for you, bring your backpack. Yeah, you know, you could stick a six pack in there, maybe a gallon of milk. It will really help without having to get all that plastic, uh, plastic bags. I mean, I know that's pretty convenient, especially when you have a condo or apartment complex. Those plastic bags do help for the convenience factor, but not for the earth. So this is something I wanted to share. 3 p.m. tomorrow, 110, breezy conditions in the afternoon once again. And the Santo 7 in honor of 7707 looks like this. Tomorrow, 111, 110, but 107 Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And midweek, we're looking at increasing clouds and the possibility of thunderstorms. That's a look at the Santo 7. We're going to send it now back to Luis. All right, thank you very much, Robert. We have an update now to that breaking news. We brought you at the top of the newscast. A SWAT is on the scene of a standoff that has children in danger. It's going on right now at an apartment complex at Flamingo in Cambridge. Police tell us a man is inside one of the units holding possibly his girlfriend and at least two children hostage. This all started as a domestic dispute, and when officers arrived, the suspect fired a shot. Stay with News 3 for continuing coverage on this story. We will bring you the latest as it becomes available. Up next in sports, one of the closest finishes in NASCAR history. And Rick shows us if Kyle Busch could sweep two races at Daytona in one day. That's next in sports. Welcome back. So how quick is five one thousandth of a second? Is it this or is it this? Well, after 650 miles of racing today, that's what the finish came down to for Las Vegas native Kyle Busch. After racing at the Boring on Tuesday night, Kyle had a chance at a rare same day double dip at Daytona. Because of a rainout last night, 20 Nextel Cup regulars raced in the Busch and Cup race today. Kyle used this move on the grass to take the lead in the Win Dixie 250 in Busch series. NASCAR told him not to do that again. But in a dominant performance, he wins his first ever race at Daytona, first Busch win of the season for him. Fast forward a few hours later, the Pepsi 400. Late in the race, lap 155, Kyle goes low with a great move to pass both Jamie McMurray and Jeff Gordon for the lead. We would fast forward to the final lap of the race. Kyle in front looking for the Daytona sweep. McMurray alongside. They make plenty of contact. Come to the line door to door. Can you tell me who finishes first on this finish? Watch this. Wow, it's, it's that thing, remember? Well, look at it again. McMurray beats him by a bumper. It's his first win in 166 races, dating all the way back to 02. It was uh, a great battle there with, with Jamie and I guess the other Hendrick cars and the other Roush cars, and Kurt Busch was in there too. So, um, you know, we just didn't quite have the, the teammate situation all worked out today, but, uh, you know, all in all, it was a great effort by my team and my guys on the CarQuest Kellogg Chevrolet being able to bring it home in second. Big news on day one of the Vegas Summer League was the media circus surrounding the top two picks in the draft. Greg Oden's performance 
Not great for Portland. Six points and 10 fouls. Kevin Durant for Seattle. He did have 18 points, but missed 12 of 17 shots. Day two action from the Cox Pavilion today. Former Rebel Lewis Amundsen and the 76ers facing the Pistons. After 16 points, 11 boards last night. Lou only played 11 minutes today. Here the pick and roll, two-handed jam. Then later more pick and roll. This time Amundsen hits the baseline jumper. Lou sprained his ankle in the first half. Ended up with just seven points as the Pistons win at no T, 91-89. As for Lou, you know, every chance uh, is a chance to get seen once again. We head to the baseball diamond. Mets and the Astros, 3-3 in the 14th inning. Mets and Astros, two on for Luke Scott. Sends a long fly ball up the hill in center. Watch Carlos Beltran. Unbelievable catch. Would have ended the game if he didn't catch it. Watch it again. Beltran. Someone stays focused on this one. The Mets would win in 17 innings, 5-3, to three, the final. And finally, it very well could be the biggest upset in Arena Football League history in the playoffs. Columbus came into the playoffs at 7-9. Dallas was a record 15-1. That touchdown got the Destroyers right back in it. Then in the final two minutes, they go up two touchdowns. A stunner. Columbus brings down Dallas 66-59. to 59. Must be nice. I'd like to have that here. Stay with us. More news for your night side right after this. story for chocolate lovers. That's Maria. To, that's me. I love it. <laughs> I admit it. To celebrate Hershey's 100th birthday today, candy makers in Pennsylvania puckered up for an extra big kiss. They unveiled the world's largest chocolate. It weighs in at, listen to this, 15,026 pounds of Wonderful chocolate. What's Love the calorie chocolate. count on that? I Who know. cares about the calorie yeah. count? Kids yeah. step away from the chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, them being a little hyper. Yeah, that might be a problem, but no, I Maria, say forget the calories. Step away from the chocolate. <laughs> Love chocolate. I admit it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Not you a gentlemen? Bad thing. Yeah, I do. White chocolate, all kinds of chocolate. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful evening. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye bye. Have a great night. <laughs>